Costa Rica has become a mecca for nature-loving travelers worldwide, and it is not difficult to see why. Over half the country is covered in lush, tropical rainforest full of some of the planet's most exotic wildlife, with miles of beautiful beaches on both Caribbean and Pacific coasts, and many scenic and active volcanoes scattered all along the way throughout various regions of the country. As excited as I'm sure you are to head down there and experience it for yourself, first, you got some questions. How safe is the country for tourists? What's the currency conversion rate? Do I even need to convert my currency? Friends, you're in the right place because we're going to answer all of that plus so much more starting now. What's up, fellow travelers? It's Gringo Rich here, and if it's your first time with us, welcome to the channel. If you're returning, welcome back. Me and the family just spent two weeks driving across Costa Rica from coast to coast, and we picked up some helpful tips along the way that you will most certainly want to know before you go. Now, we will be dropping some additional knowledge nuggets along the way, so whenever you see this guy, get your mental notepads ready, because those are going to be some bonus tips that make your life a little easier while you're there. So let's start with the most common question that we've been asked by friends and family, and that's of course, is Costa Rica safe? Generally speaking, Costa Rica is widely considered to be the safest Central American country for tourists to visit. While looking over the country's violent crime rates can be a little daunting, it's important to remember that of all of the homicides occurring in the country last year, 67% of them were reported as score-settling events between rival gangs and occurred mostly within the heavily populated capital city of San Jose. Based on our recent experience in the country, we can confirm that yes, Costa Rica is generally safe, but only if you are. Petty crime will of course be somewhat of a threat anywhere you travel, but much like most places, basic common sense is gonna get you a long way. Don't leave valuables out in plain sight. Stay in well-lit areas at night, especially if you're by yourself. Don't flaunt flashy jewelry. We actually didn't even bring any jewelry with us other than our cheap little silicone wedding rings. We didn't encounter any sketchy characters while we were there, but better safe than sorry. Everyone we came across was super friendly and genuinely seemed happy to have us there. While we're still under the safety umbrella, I do want to express the importance of sunscreen and bug spray. Sunscreen, self-explanatory. If you'll be out in the sun, protect your skin. Do not sleep on melanoma, guys. It is no joke. As far as bug spray, most of the country is thick, humid rainforest, and the mosquitoes hit a little different down there. They will carry off a small child if they're not on a leash. I've seen it a hundred times. Malaria, typhoid, dengue fever, and a few others are very real threats depending on the region of the country. So be sure to check if there's anything prevalent in the region you'll be visiting and get with your healthcare professional on whether you should be taking any preventative meds or vaccines. Up next, let's talk about the weather. I feel like I would be doing you a disservice if I didn't discuss the humidity. It is thick as mud and you can cut it with a sawzall. This is a country with a tropical climate that ranges from anywhere to around 70 to 100% humidity year round, depending on the location. Now, if you're a tropical people, such as my wife, who's half Filipino, you'll probably adapt just fine. But if you're a sweaty gringo, like myself, you're gonna be sweating from when you get off the plane to when you get back on the plane. Now, that is an exaggeration, but not by much. Whew, I'm sweating. So keep a sweat rag in your backpack and remember to keep these simple but significant precautions in mind. Of course, drink plenty of water. We kept a case of bottled water with us in the trunk at all times and just bought more as we needed down the road. The tap water is safe to drink in most places, but be sure to ask if it seems questionable and use your best judgment, which you'll start to see what I mean by that as you get out there in the mix. Eating plenty of fruit is another way to help stay hydrated, which that shouldn't be too difficult. All the fruit that we had was locally grown and just the freshest, juiciest fruit you've ever had in your life. Light, quick dry clothing is also gonna come in super handy. Those shorts that are made from almost the same kind of material as swim trunks are made out of. I brought a couple of pair with me and I should have brought like five. Those quick dry shorts and the Under Armour style training shirts became my go-to attire anytime we were going out hiking or doing anything active. Something else that we used a lot more than I thought we would was our closed toed waterproof hiking sandals. Since we were there in June, which is during the rainy season, it did rain quite a bit, mostly in the afternoon. So we would go out and do our thing in the morning and then use the afternoon to unwind at the hotel while it was raining. But when we were out, out, there was a lot of mud. With these things, the mud wasn't a problem. They're fully functional like a pair of hiking shoes. They're comfortable with plenty of support. And with a closed toe, if you kick a rock or something, you're not going to bust open your toenail or anything like that. And at the end of the day, you just hose them off, leave them out overnight, and they're ready to rock the next morning. Other than the flip-flops I was wearing back at the hotels, I was rocking these things pretty much the whole trip. The brand we bought was Keen. I'll be sure to leave a link in the description below for the ones that we used. 
Guys, I do want to mention that if you are getting any useful information out of this video and want more of it in your life, then consider subscribing to our channel. Me, my wife, and our son love seeing the world. We love relaying back as much practical information as possible so travelers like yourself can learn from our experiences. And we would love for you to join us on our journey. If not, thanks for being here for this one. All right, moving on. We got to talk about eco lodges. All right, I couldn't vlog us getting up here because it turned into a question of whether or not we'd be able to get up here or not. And we made it. Now we're hiking up to the Eco Lodge. Let's go. Hotels, resorts, we're all familiar, right? Eco Lodges are a little bit different. An Eco Lodge has some electrical outlets. It has running water. It has a refrigerator, but there's no air conditioning. There's no ceiling fans. You might have like an oscillating fan or a box fan or something, but that's about it. Whew, I'm sweating. It's an open concept with a ton of windows where you can open them all up and really be one with nature. But depending on your comfort level, that may or may not be a good thing. Now, the country of Costa Rica is only about the size of the US state of West Virginia, but it's home to 5% of the entire world's biodiversity. That's a lot of wildlife. When you're at an eco lodge, you are very much out in the middle of all of it. There's gonna be sounds. They sound like demons, man. And movement. So the bats have woken up and one like kind of nicked me on the top of the head. And you're not gonna know what it is. Is it a squirrel? Is it a chupacabra? I don't know, because it's pitch black out there and I don't wanna go find out. <laughs> this is insane. The one we stayed at in Corcovado down on the South Pacific side, the day we got there, I was like, what in the world did we get ourselves into? There was about six bats that lived on a wall up above the bathroom inside the cabin all day long. Taking a shower with bats this morning because who doesn't like a little company in the shower and then right as the sun was going down they'd spring to life and fly around the cabin and it's just complete unhinged anarchy for two minutes an hour who's to say and we're ducking and dodging bats and one whizzed by and clipped my ear a little bit and i'm just like what is happening right now that one flew out and another one flew right back in that's good so the bats are flying around our cabin tell me what, tell me what. can't see because like GoPros way. get horrible quality and low light. Oh yeah, they're still there. I uh, hear them. Oh. Why are you running out? It was like nothing I've ever experienced in my entire life. This is like nothing I've ever experienced in my entire life. Me neither. And then they'd all fly out and they'd go live their little nightlife or whatever. And then as the sun was coming up, which was about five in the morning, we're sleeping under this mosquito net and I wake up to the sound of bat wings flapping around above my head and I look up and I'm just like, <sighs> It's, it's just normal at this point. And then when we all wake up, they're posted back up on the wall for the rest of the day until the sun goes down and round and round we go. Marcus, el translator, translated for us about the spider and the bats. Aranya. Aranya, Aranya is spider. Marcielagos uh, is bats. Marcielagos is bats. Uh, es normal. She said whenever night falls, the bats will take off during the day in La Casa, at night, fly away. Hey, Rick, it's fine. <laughs> this is... It's normal. It's normal. It's, yeah. it's perfecto normal. Now, if you are on board with a lodging experience like that, then eco lodges are a great way to save money. The ones we stayed at were less than a hundred bucks a night. And I promise you, I'm not trying to deter anyone from anything. I'm just trying to spread awareness here. I just want to make sure that you are mentally prepared for what you're getting yourself into, because if you're not, you will get blindsided and it will rock your world. I am living proof of that. Now, with all that said, I'm glad we had those experiences. I'm glad I have the stories to tell. The people that we met in those little communities are just some of the purest souls on the planet. The experiences we had, I'll be carrying those with me and probably talking about them for the rest of my life. And I love that. And if you're looking to have those kinds of experiences, then you should absolutely go for it. I just want you to be aware that when you're booking your trip and you see that word Eco Lodge, that needs to be a bell ringer. And you really need to be considering what you'll be immersing yourself in because it's a different world that you need to be prepared for. And I was not. Now let's talk about driving through Costa Rica. It's a trade-off of beautiful views for pavement. And we have a flat tire. Here we go. 
I touched a little bit about driving around Monteverde in a previous video. In this segment, we'll dive a little deeper into driving around the country as a whole. There's plenty of public transportation available like buses or private shuttles. And if you're say flying into Liberia and then going to spend seven days in Tamarindo and then going straight back to Liberia to fly home, then public transport might be the best option for you. We like to move around a lot on our trips. We wanted to see both coasts and everything we could in between. And if you're moving around like that, then renting a car is gonna be your most efficient option. When you're looking into renting a car, you'll find a ton of information online about whether or not you need a four wheel drive or if a two wheel drive will work and pros and cons of each. And every bit of it, whether it's someone's blog or a YouTube video is someone's personal opinion, usually based on their personal experience. And my friends, you have landed on ours. So if I was booking a trip to Costa Rica right now, knowing what I know based on our experience, I would book a two wheel drive to save a little bit of money, probably an SUV, definitely with some clearance and that is a must you have to have clearance guys we drove around the country for two weeks in a nissan versa which is a small four-door car low to the ground and some of those roads i don't know how we made it please keep us safe god please please keep us safe our first full day of driving, we were going from San Jose down to Puerto Viejo on the Southern Caribbean side. And on the way, we stopped to check out the Irazu volcano. When we were leaving the volcano, we punched our directions into ways off we went. And we're driving through this little village and there's some guys standing out in front of a house kind of pointing and laughing at us a little bit. We quickly figured out that they were laughing at us because they knew that we were about to take a compact car off-roading down the side of a mountain. And there's a good chance that little Versa wasn't gonna make it. Well, we wanted adventure. We're getting adventure. So we're cruising along in the Versa and we're on an unpaved road, but it's nothing too sketchy. And then it starts getting a little rougher and we're like, well, hopefully it doesn't get too much worse. It's probably the worst of it. And then we come around this corner and it's just rocks, just big, uneven rocks. And that's the terrain that we get the trek across to get to point B over there. And we don't know how much worse it gets because the roads are so windy that we can't see around that next corner. And I'm looking at it like, well, this is a bad idea. And then I look behind us and we're definitely not making it back up that way. All we can really do is just press onward and let the forces of gravity do their thing. And you know, make it down this mountain one way or another. Now, I tell you all of that only to emphasize that clearance is the magic word here. Unless you're just wanting to intentionally get off the path and go get some mud on the tires, you can definitely get by with the two-wheel drive, but you gotta make sure that thing is high enough off the ground to where if Waze does take you on a sketchy route, you're not gonna have to explain to the rental company why the bottom half of the car is all busted up. Let's move on to another important segment, and that is how you'll be paying for things. The national currency for Costa Rica is colones, and while the currency conversion rates do vary, as of 2023, it was 540 colones to $1. A practical way to do the quick math on that in your head, just so you're not completely lost in the economy, is if 1,080 colones equals $2, then just double it by the thousands, and that'll give you a good basis to start from. Some real life examples of that would be if something costs 5,000 colones, then it's gonna be somewhere around $10. If something costs 10,000 colones, is gonna be somewhere around $20. Of course, the dollar amounts are gonna drop once you start getting up into the tens of thousands. For example, 54,000 colones is gonna be exactly $100, but you can see the thought process. This is just a little practical application to keep you from having to pull out your calculator and hold up the line, or just handing all your money over to a complete stranger and letting them do the math for you. Make sure to verify current conversion rates because they do fluctuate. 99% of places are gonna accept credit cards. And fortunately, if you're from the US, most places are gonna accept dollars as well, but they will be giving you change back in colones. So you're gonna wanna start spending those as they accumulate or else you'll be coming home with a big stack of colones that you can't do anything with. Keep an eye on how many you have, use them for smaller meals, cases of water, you get it. If you are renting a car, then remember that the major highways are gonna have toll booths periodically, which they were never much, somewhere between three to 500 colones, so less than a dollar most of the time. Make sure you hold on to your coins because those are gonna come in handy for the tolls. So for this one, it has to be exact change. She was walking up and down yelling, exacto, exacto. Fortunately for us, we have exacto colones. <laughs> Success! We made it through another toll booth. Ain't that right? Mm -hmm. Something that we figured out a few days in is that if you want to save money on food while you're there, then get used to eating at sodas. Yeah, seven bucks for this place. The sodas are where it's at. 
These are gonna be your smaller mom and pop style restaurants, which that's usually where I prefer to eat anyways. It's gonna be your more authentic cultural cuisine where this woman is cooking you a recipe that's been passed down for multiple generations and it is muy delicioso. And a lot of the ones where we ate were around half of the price of the more touristy restaurants. If you're eating at commercialized restaurants, then you're gonna be paying commercialized prices. After you've been there a day or two and you made a few purchases, then the currency situation is pretty easy to adapt to. I just want you to have somewhat of a heads up on how it works so you're not going in blind once you get there. Let's touch real quick on some of our favorite places to stay while we were there. Right off the top, our favorite, hands down, is gonna be Shanna by the Beach and Manuel Antonio. We gotta go back. That's all there is to it. This place was just too nice. So I love the beach and I love the mountains. Most of the time, you gotta pick one or the other. You don't have to pick here. You got the beach and the mountains. There's a path that takes you down to the beach. That's the, the hotel beach down there. There's no real waves over there, but if you can see across the way over there, that's the beach where everybody surfs apparently. And look, the mountains are right there. Yeah, this place is incredible. It was luxurious with beautiful views of the Pacific coast where you'll be getting those legendary Costa Rica sunsets every night. If you are wanting to see some capuchin monkeys, then you will definitely see them here. Those are gonna be the little guys with the white face. As soon as we pulled into the place, we see multiple capuchins walking on the power lines out front. And then when they took us up to the room, we go out on the balcony and these things are just swinging from our neighbor's balcony. And then they jumped onto our balcony while we were still out there and they're just kind of walking along the rails, just peeping the scene. They actually slapped one of our windows from the outside and that little monkey paw print stayed on the window the whole time we were there. It was up close and personal with some capuchin monkeys. One thing to remember though, is that they are little thieves apparently. So avoid leaving any valuables out on your balcony like shoes or swim trunks because you will mess around and get robbed by a monkey and that would be embarrassing. A close second behind the Shanna is gonna be the Volcano Lodge in La Fortuna. This place has great views of Arenal. They have multiple swimming pools. They actually have multiple natural hot spring pools. We didn't know it until we got there, but we actually had our own private natural spring hot tub right off our back patio, which was a nice little surprise and super relaxing. Both the Shanna and the Volcano Lodge are gonna have amazing breakfast buffets, which if you've followed along on any of our previous videos, you know that that is a huge selling point for us. Over on the Caribbean side, if you are ready to take on an eco lodge, then La Finca Chica is one that I would actually stay at again. It's in Playa Cacles, which is about a five minute drive from Puerto Viejo. If this place had air conditioning, I could totally see myself living somewhere like that. It's this rad little cabin out in the middle of the rainforest and you wake up to monkeys swinging around, all kinds of colorful birds, beautiful flowers, everything that you'd be looking for out of a stay in the middle of the rainforest. Again, no AC, no ceiling fans, but we definitely enjoyed our stay there. For full video walkthroughs of the hotels, resorts, and eco lodges that we stayed at, we put together this playlist so you can have a look for yourself and get the full visual experience before making your decision.